Hello from Beijing Daxian International Airport, the capital city's newest airport. On Tuesday, a flight to Hong Kong took off from here as the airport resumed its operation of international passenger flights after China optimized its COVID policies. <laughs> That's really excellent news. Daxian Airport has been considered one of the top airports in the world, and I really look forward to taking a flight from here soon. You know, after three years, it's nice to see a lot of activity here again. Many travelers are off on their spring festival vacation. It has been a little over a month since China optimized its COVID response. People now can travel more confidently um, as we're past the peak of infections. Many people have asked, do you feel safe after the policy changes? My answer is definitely yes. I've lived in China during the pandemic and I really respect the learning and adapting approach, which is as new information becomes available, policies change. Life across the world's second largest economy is gradually returning to normal. Uh, but lately, I've also seen some Western media criticizing China for not being prepared or China was not ready for this policy change. What do you think? Well, I think to fight an invisible enemy such as COVID, you can never be fully prepared, especially in a huge country of 1.4 billion people. In some international media and certainly in some capitals, there's always the desire to try to find some means for criticizing China and even demonizing China. And of course, the pandemic and has been politicized from the start, uh, above all by the White House. In short, it's really just picking on China, trying to find a, another point of leverage in the narrative. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a virologist. And I do trust that the Chinese government has looked carefully at these things before they made the most recent decisions to open up, as they did. I know that there are people around the world and governments around the world that are currently critical of such a rapid reopening, but I, I find that a little bit disingenuous because not so long ago, those same people were also calling for China to open up. Personally speaking, people talk about that because that don't live in China and then don't really don't know the real situation here. I've been living in this country for over 20 years. I saw and experienced things by myself. Effort has been being made all on the front and China has been kept casualty rates and severe cases at the lower level. People like to comment and it's always easier to say than to do something. China is the fast growing country that draws all of our attention. I think no matter what China do, people always have something to discuss or, or comment something. I was a boxer before the national team. When I fight for championship, when I won, some people would say I was lucky. If I lost, some other people would say I was not good enough. So I think it's normal for all voices to criticize or no matter what we do or how we do. For a government managing such a big country with so big population, it's, it's not even possible to do any better than this. China is always prepared for all situations and adapt really quickly. I think in a lot of cases it's people seizing an opportunity for media coverage, certainly common in the U.S. And I don't think that the controversy makes sense at this point in time because the energy is better spent on dealing with what the situation is now. Move forward. No, definitely not unprepared. I'm not sure though whether completely adequately prepared, but I don't know if that's even possible with such a large population. It's a really daunting challenge. That's why I say I think they've done a, a good job of doing as much as could be done in a very short amount of time. I'm very glad to have been in China over the last three years because I have felt much safer from COVID in other parts of the world. Well, this is one of my favorite areas of Beijing, the Financial Street. Why here? Well, I used to live near here, and what I really like about it is the modern landscape design melding with ancient Chinese architecture. Like the City God Temple, a Taoist sacred place built around 800 years ago to protect the city. Uh, interesting that you said protect because 
The Chinese government has been protecting its people over the past three years. For example, the vaccination rollout. Right. By December 23rd last year, over 90% of the Chinese mainland population got fully vaccinated, equal to 3.46 billion doses. Well, the virus has weakened. I had COVID a few weeks ago, but it was kind of like a mild cold, and a friend of mine had it, and for him it was like a bad flu. Also, the accumulation of experience and the specific healthcare guidelines also helped the country's COVID strategy enter a new stage. I agree. Over the past three years, we've all benefited from the evolution of the COVID measures. China has been preparing for the reopening of the country in the last three years. Three years ago, the virus was unknown to anyone, but China made some research and shared information with other countries. Now China has extensive epidemic prevention uh, experience on, on, on the issue. Besides that, China vaccination level has been on the rise, and the adjustments on the situation has been made based on the scientific evaluation and evolving the situation in the country. Well, we know that there were a lot of preparations made. We know that uh, China, of course, developed vaccines. We know that they had uh, done a pretty good job getting vaccines uh, disseminated. Uh, there was uh, fairly good uptake rates. Um, we know that uh, China had uh, prepared hospitals and expanded access. Uh, they expanded uh, local hospital capacity to deal with um, uh, surges. Uh, of course, you know, given uh, a population uh, the size of China, and, and in some cases, uh, the incredible density, for example, here in Shanghai, where we have 26 million people, um, there's always going to be uh, the, the challenge that, that a surge would present uh, to a hospital. Sure, I agree. As a doctor, I know how the important the medicine and medical beds are fighting against the virus. China has coordinated medical resources to increase capacity of hospitals and supply more equipment and medication for the treatment of severe cases. Government, doctors, nurses, volunteers and every single citizen are doing their part and contribution to ensure the victory over the battles against the virus. During the pandemic, sure, it wasn't always comfortable. Sometimes it was really frustrating. Yes, we haven't traveled. It's okay. We managed to not get sick for three years. We had a very elderly, fragile person in our house, and if the disease got brought home to my mother, it probably would have killed her. So I'm glad that it was managed the way it has been managed. Uh, we know that there was a lot done. We did see within two weeks, um, uh, within a one-week period, but also within a two-week period, uh, the government responding with uh, uh, protocols by increasing uh, drug production, uh, ensuring that people have uh, the right advice, uh, the right guidance, and the right supplies to move forward. And as a result, I think we've seen already a considerable amount of stabilization in the last few weeks. Uh, I think that that's something that is sort of unique to China to be able to move mountains, so to speak, and create factories and industries to support preparing for and dealing with the epidemic. So it's really pretty impressive. The facilities that were built amazingly quickly, I don't know where else you can do that except in China. Factories don't get built overnight. It takes time, it takes planning, it takes lots of people to build the equipment to make that happen. It absolutely represents emergency preparedness. I think when we, when we step back from COVID from a few years away from it, I think one of the things that we, we're going to have to uh, come to terms with is the incredible job China, uh, China did with COVID. Uh, but by and large, I think uh, almost at almost every step of the way from the initial outbreak to the end, uh, China has been an innovator and a, a global leader in, in, in figuring out how to deal with this type of problem. You know, I'm really a big fan of train travel, especially in China, where the trains are efficient and the network extensive. And right now, we're at a train station during the Spring Festival Travel Rush, the biggest human migration on Earth. 2.1 billion passenger trips 
are expected to be taken during this period. The excitement around us is contagious. It's hard not to be in a good mood. We aren't just at any railway station. This is Asia's largest passenger railway hub, Beijing Fengtai Railway Station, the city's oldest. It reopened seven months ago after a four-year reconstruction. We're definitely on track to a normal life. It has been a challenging journey for everyone. Mm, that's for sure. But normality is not the end, it is a new beginning. Because the optimization of China's COVID responses does not mean letting go of the virus. It means the focus has been shifted to ensuring resources are allocated to where they're most needed. China now has a more robust medical treatment capacity, better governance at the grassroots level, and a greater social tolerance. I think more importantly, people are calmer and more confident in dealing with the virus. We want to wish everybody safe travels home. Happy Chinese Lunar New Year. 春节快乐。